Morning Discovery. Uh, that one was for you, Bjarni. You probably guessed that. And uh, we know you're thinking a lot about vibrations these days, and uh, may all your good vibrations be very small. Thanks, Mark. It took us a little while to figure that out. Kind of slow up here, but hopefully we'll be back in business with them good vibrations in a couple hours. Sounds good. Colonel uh, Brown, good morning, and thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, good morning to you, and it's uh, definitely a pleasure. We always love to talk to the folks. Let me ask you, first of all, how long have you folks been up this morning? I understand the Beach Boys, the sound of the Beach Boys at least, awakened you a little earlier this morning. How long have you been up and at work? Well, we've just been up a couple, three hours now. We're just finishing up on our post-sleep activities, which is basically getting up and getting reconfigured for the day's work. And matter of fact, we're just starting uh, some of our robot, robot arm operations in just a few moments. What will you be doing with that? Well, actually, today is a, a new sequence of uh, testing. Uh, we're going to detach the orbital replacement unit one more time today, but the new part is uh, the ground is going to uplink commands to the robot arm, and they're going to control it from the ground pretty much, and we're going to be on the aft flight deck of the orbiter watching the uh, arm, and uh, we're kind of like the safety observers, and the ground will be doing all the commanding. 
Admiral, let me ask you, I understand that uh, the German satellite that you launched the other day uh, uh, came within one and a half miles of a 500 piece of space junk up there in orbit. Uh, how close was that and how serious a problem was that? Well, actually, uh, there's obviously a lot of debris up here in space. We've been uh, coming to space, uh, our country and, and other countries, for many years. So there is a lot of debris up here. Uh, we do track that debris, and we try to maintain uh, our distance from that. Uh, I read the news this morning, obviously, and, uh, and saw that. Uh, it wasn't any danger to the orbiter. Uh, obviously, they had a little bit of concern for the satellite, but once they uh, got the tracking down and narrowed it down exactly where it was going, it... Uh, it uh, was okay. They'd, as far as I know, they did not have to maneuver the uh, crystal satellite around to, uh, to miss the, uh, the piece of hardware, but uh, they could have done that if they really needed to. But I read down here that had they, in fact, collided, it would have been disastrous for that satellite. Is that correct? Well, satellites are built to uh, operate in vacuum and in space. They're not very structurally sound, meaning that... Uh, Anything that collides with an uh, orbiting body uh, is probably going to do severe damage uh, just because of the speeds that they're traveling. And if they're coming from different directions, uh, you almost double that speed. Okay. Let me, the, the satellite that is out there, as I understand, is doing research on the ozone uh, layers of the Earth. Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about that and why that is significant for, for those of us down here. Well, we're trying to learn as much as we can about the Earth's atmosphere and, and how we as humans affect that atmosphere. Uh, this satellite flew back in 1994 on the uh, STS-66 shuttle mission. I had a chance to take part in that mission also, and we gathered a lot of data about the ozone, the upper-level structure of the ap atmosphere. And this mission, we're going to do the same, but they've incorporated a new twist to their satellite. They're able to maneuver their satellite and yaw it left and right to be able to cover more of the Earth's surface. So we'll be able to map more of the ozone and the upper-level chemicals and structures of the atmosphere than we did in 1994. And when you put all that data together, we're trying to understand how the Earth's atmosphere evolves over time and how we as humans affect that atmosphere. Obviously, we need that atmosphere to survive, and, and if uh, we are doing something that we think may be hurting it, we need to figure out a better way of doing it. And the other thing you learn from space uh, up in the shuttle, if you look out at the Earth's limb, the little layer of atmosphere around the shuttle, or excuse me, around the Earth, from the shuttle, you, uh, you realize how fragile the Earth really is, the atmosphere, because it's a very thin uh, body of material that envelops the Earth and protects us from all the uh, harmful emissions from outer space. And what's on tap for today, specifically? What, uh, what things do you have planned? Well, a lot of the day will be uh, done with the, uh, the MFD, the, uh, the little small robot arm that we have on board. We'll be working on that. We also have the uh, mid-deck experiments going on, the uh, BDS, which is working with uh, cell growth. Uh, right to my, uh, my left here, you can't see just out of the photo, uh, Bjarni Trigvason, our Canadian payload specialist, is working hard on his uh, microgravity isolation mount experiment. And... Uh, we're just uh, busy as bees up here. I've, this is my fir fourth flight, and uh, I'm still awed by how busy we've been on this flight, and, uh, and it seems to continue from day to day. So we're very happy to be at work, and, uh, and uh, time up here is very valuable, so we like to stay busy. And Discovery Houston, uh, we do have video from the mid-deck. Okay, Bill, welcome aboard.
we give you a couple minutes of flight deck uh, while we're setting up here? We copy. 